it looks like I am live. Hoo, hoo, hoo. So let's see. Everyone can hear me okay. I think so. Hopefully. Um, just doing all the things to make sure that all the things are working. Not sure if anybody. Oh, there are a couple of people out there. So if you can hear me, let me know. We're all good. Um, da, 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 da. I'm going to click on the button to make sure unless somebody pops in now. Um, let's see. Let's see. Do I have audio? Do I have audio? Well, that's the audio of a commercial, which, you know, we don't like that. Okay, good. Hey, oh, wonderful. Great. I don't have to do that then. Yay, you guys can hear me. It's all good. Hi, Onsma, Morticia, Leah, Ann, Sandra. Oh, thank you guys so much for coming out. I know this was super last minute. Ignore, by the way, ignore all the mess up there. That's all the stuff I don't know what to do to organize so far. Um, hey, Liz. So, yeah, so ignore the, <laughs> concentrate on the nice organized stuff here, not on the mess on top. So, um, I was talking to JL and I realized that this skirt that we started pattern drafting last Thursday needs to be in the mail by tomorrow. So my plan to live stream on Thursday, the finish of this kind of got a little, uh, ruined. <laughs> so, um, tonight I'm going to finish up what I can um on the stream with you guys pretty much what i wanted to kind of walk you through tonight oh hi jay from australia i have i have barbara uh try refreshing okay um so what i want to really focus on tonight is talking about the changes that I made to the pattern because I did make a couple changes. I want to talk about creating the pockets, like how I draft up a pocket because we're going to do that from scratch. And kind of the construct, like thinking through the process of how I'm going to construct the skirt. Um, and then whatever else we can fit in, we'll fit in. Um, oh, yay, JL is here. We had a bit of a button dilemma earlier today because I realized she had sent me. Um, we don't know if I lost three buttons or if she just sent me only three buttons of a certain type, but there was a button dilemma that neither one of us knew what the issue was. So we changed up some buttons. But yeah, and I want to talk through the button placement. So that's kind of my plan for tonight. Um, feel free in the comment section let me know uh, if you have any questions. And uh, right now I'm just cutting some stuff out that I didn't get cut out before the stream started. But let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. I know last time we had a couple of people that had been working on uh, the Gertie like picnic top and the skirt that goes with it, which is a bit similar to the skirt that we're doing tonight. And if you... Oh, thank you. Thank you. I did actually uh, brush my hair and put on a little makeup for you guys tonight. So I'm going to show you the skirt. I didn't figure out the good technical stuff. So it's literally me pointing the phone at you guys. But this is the skirt that we're making. So it's very similar to the Gertie picnic skirt. This one is a little bit different and that it is a three four circle skirt where um, the one that button down that Gertie has is gathered. And then we've got the pockets. But we've also got, if you see right here, we've got some zigzag piping trim, zigzag trim that's going on the front placket, on the pocket, and on the bottom of the skirt. So that's going to change how we construct things a little bit. Um, oh, thank you, Martisha. I um I like sewing in Moo Moo's for some reason. I don't know why. I just like the freedom of, you know, 
no waistbands, I guess. Or <laughs> I guess it's as close to like pajama sewing as you can get without being in pajamas. So what I cut out while I was um, getting ready for all of this is I cut out the skirt and I cut out the waistbands and now I'm just cutting out the interfacing for the waistbands. And it is a fusible interfacing, which just means that it is going to attach by ironing it on, which is fun. And it will give stability to the waistband and it will also make sure that the waistband doesn't like stretch out over time. It'll stretch a little bit, but not too, too much. So I think I got one more interfacing to, they are comfy, aren't they? I also just bought like a bunch of a couple more sewing patterns, vintage sewing patterns. And I've been like, <laughs> like every like pajama, robe, moo moo. It's a, it's a very work from home aesthetic that I've been looking at with sewing patterns lately. Hey, Herb. Yay. I'm so glad to hear that. Now, um, I am going to show you how I tend to cut out my waistbands because I don't use scissors. Um, let me just tilt you down. I actually use my rotary cutter. I use the edge of my ruler. And then just kind of hold that down and zippity doo -dah. And it's really easy if you don't have a doll one. I have a doll one. <laughs> um so yeah, makes it a lot easier to cut. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Are you a rotary cutter person or are you a scissor person when you cut? I kind of go back and forth between the others. And I will say for the longest time, I just use like these. What are these? Friskers, which are good like crafting scissors. And then I got my hands on a pair of um, how do you say I'm Gingers, seamstress scissors. Oh my God, they make a big difference. Um, and just because uh, where the computer is set up, I'm just going to trim this. And I'm not like super worried about being the straightest and <laughs> good thing. Um, just because uh, it's the interfacing. It doesn't need to be perfect. So I'll just hack and slash that side of it. Ooh, Ellie, Ellie. Ellie, Ellie, you got a rotor cut. Oh, I know, right? It changes things a little bit. I bought some too. You have a ton of old vintage. Oh, 1930s. I never see those those uh, old ones. Your mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like I, I'm team Liz's mom on the rotary cutter. All right. So I put the ironing board back there. So what I want to talk about is for those of you that were here the last time, we drafted the three, four circle skirt pattern, right? So here's the pattern. And what I cut out was one large one that's pretty much the size of the pattern piece, right? And this is the back of the skirt. Then what I did, and this is the, and this is this is this is why I do it this way, because um, you can have separate pattern pieces for each of those, but it takes less paper to do it this way, and I have a more flexible pattern. But basically, after I cut out the back, of course I don't want to cut out this for the front because it's going to be open down the middle. So I fold it in half. And then I cut out the right side and the left side. Yeah, right and left. <laughs> but what I also did is, you will remember, like on the side here, we added uh, another two inches that we're going to do for the flap for the buttonhole, for the buttons, right? Because we want to double up that fabric. And then we also, I added, originally I had an inch on here for the buttons. We're going to be in an inch. But I did some experimentation and I was like, you know what? 
that's too far in. So I, and I went and checked a, a top of mine, and that was only five eighths. So I decided I was going to go with five eighths. So um, when I cut this out, I just laid my ruler next to it and used my rotary cutter because it's a straight edge. And I added another two and five eighths on the, um, which will be the the right side. So this side. Boop. Button. And then on the left side, I think there's still a button the other way, but okay, th this other way is where it gets a little interesting because on the left side, which is going to be for the buttonholes, right, we're still going to have that two inches for the flap, which is going to back the buttons, but we need to put on the rickrack trim, right? And we don't want to just stitch it on to the back of the skirt because then if you look at it from the inside, it's going to look ugly, right? So we want it to be sandwiched between two pieces of fabric. So what I did, and I actually haven't cut this out yet, but we're going to actually cut out this uh, extra two inches separately. But because we're going to have to stitch them together, it means that we're going to have to add a 5 a 7 inch seam allowance. So um, I am not only adding five eighths of an inch to this two inches, I'm also going to add it to this. So when I cut this out, I ended up doing five eighths of an inch for the overlap of the button and another five eighths of an inch for sewing the flap to it, if that makes sense. So um, let's see. Uh, -do -do -do. I guess you guys are talking to my hair right now. Uh, you're better with the scissors, but you're still new to sewing. Scissors are your best friend. They're, you know, and it's nice because um, when you start sewing, you don't need all the bells and whistles. And scissors are so versatile that they're just great to have. Um, right, rotary cutters for straight lines. Yeah, Leah, yeah. As long as it fits on the mat. Yep. Because the mats are only so big. I've really been trying to find um, a cutting mat that I can get custom cut for the top of this table. It would be great. Um, hey, Cheryl Ann. I'm so glad you made it. Barbara uses scissors as well. That has a drop dead and stays on the cutting board. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is why I sew all your skirts. Okay. And then the other thing that I did because, okay, so here are the two front pieces that I cut out. Ba -da -da. And da -da. there, there we go. So that's the front of the skirt. Now, because these are, um, <laughs> it's gingham, so you can't really tell uh, the front from the back. I put two pins on one side of it so that I would know that this is the, <laughs> this is the I meant to I meant to actually put the pins on here as well. I think this is the um oh my god, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure that this is the buttonhole, the buttonhole side. But let's just double check. So let me see, let me see. Um this is, well, I can tell right away. Yeah, this is. Well, we'll just figure that out. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to lay these two pieces together and figure which one's bigger than the other one. That'll do it. So I'm just checking at the waist because that will be the easiest way to tell. Yeah, so the one without the pins in it is the bigger one, which is going to make it the button side. So uh, the bigger one is the button side. So let's put pins on that before I forget what my secret codes are. All right. 
So I'm just pinning the pattern piece so I know that they match. And now we have a couple of ways that we could do this for, um, we're gonna do the, that flap that's gonna back the buttonhole side because that's the side that's gonna have the rickrack. Um, I could pattern it out. I could do all that fun stuff or I could just use my little ruler and cut it straight out of the gingham which is what we're going to do because number one, it will save us time. And number two, mm -hmm. I don't know what number two is. <laughs> now um, I did pre-wash the fabric. Um, I ironed it a little bit. Um, if you're doing something that's super, super fitted and you need to make sure that it's perfect. I would definitely iron everything like super nice and smooth. Um, but because this is a circle uh, skirt, I don't feel like I have to. So we're going to make this eight. 17 plus eight. What's 17 plus eight? Can someone math for me? <laughs> Um, Jay Smith, I love all the frilly bolts of fabric behind you on the shelf. Oh, okay, guys, I got this one from Joanne when they were closing one of the Joannes by me because they were building a smaller one. I got it for like, I don't know, like three bucks. I have no idea what to do with it. It has all these little like circles like hanging off of it. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. I was like, I could do something with that. And I... <laughs> Oh, okay. So this is what I'm going to do. This is what I love. If we're talking about like sewing basics to start with outside of scissors, um, hands down, one of my favorite sewing tools. So what we can do is I'm going to use the very edge of the gingham here as my line because that is the selvage. Um, and the selvage will always be straight. So you're always good to start off your selvage. So I am just going to trim that selvage off. So I have a good starting point. There we go. And then, because then what I can do, because we only need this to be two and five eighths. So I'm just going to slide this right off the edge there so I can see where my 5 eighths mark is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut on this side right along the ruler. And um, this, <laughs> like I said, it's a dull rotary cutter. So I got to always make sure that I actually cut all the threads. Hostess apron for the Joanne fabric. Oh, I found the cutest. It's a McCall's pattern. Oh, here it is. Good. Uh, I found, oh my God, you guys. Right? I cannot wait to make it. I'm in the middle of making a skirt or uh, an apron right now with some of the fabric that I got from that estate sale. Um, and I am filming that one. So that one will be a video probably in like two weeks, I think. So I'm super excited about that. But that could be kind of fun for that one, right? All right. And then I'm going to trim off the top here. All right. So I'm also going to make... I tried to move everything so it was closer. So now I need to know where my ruler stopped. So I'm just going to take my tailor and I'm just doing it like right on the very edge. So that will end up inside my seam allowance and won't be seen, but I have something to work off of. Um, hey, Sunray. 
You're in no oh, I see. Oh, girl, I've been seeing your Nola pictures. Mm. So jealous. You went to a food truck today, I think, right? So, so jealous. Eat all the good food. Um, so thanks for stopping by, especially being on VK. All right, so once again, I'm just cutting off my salvage. And I'm just going down however long, right? Um, did I say 17 plus 8? I think I did, right? Yeah. This is actually 18 plus 8. <laughs> oh. Um, so 18 plus 8. Well, I will just, I'll do it the easy way and not ask you guys to do all my math for me again. <laughs> And there we go. I'm going to actually cut this a little bit longer than I need to because it might, it, you know, there's going to be a curve and plus I don't want to, I want, I just want to make sure I don't like mess it up and I can always trim off the extra. So I'm just going to zip it down farther than it needs to be. And again, do my five eighths of an inch. Doo -doo -doo -boo. And then okay, and then we have our, our long strip for the button. Again, my rotary cutter didn't cut all the threads. Okay. So now put that over here. All right. So now let's talk about the pocket, shall we? I'm going to grab some more of my brown paper. So I did do, I'm going to grab my marker. blue one that I really like. It had a really nice sharp point and I don't know where it went. Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's take a look at our reference photo. Um, okay. So we can see from the reference photo that it is a, um, it has an overlap at the top, right? And it's just a patch pocket. But it has rounded corners. So, and it's not a very big um, pocket. Um, I always try to look when I'm looking at stuff. The rule of thirds is a really good one to follow as far as size goes. And um, I can tell that if we were to move this pocket up, it would be mm, about maybe a third of the size of the skirt. So I know that the skirt is um, 27. Oh, I don't. It was like I specifically grabbed the other one because it wasn't so annoying. The skirt is 27 inches long. Always, right? Gotta have snack pockets. So I'm going to take 27 and divide it by 30. Because again, rule of thirds. And that's nine inches. So I know I don't want it to be any larger than nine inches. Um, if I do, then you got to think how much larger, because then you're talking like those really big, like oversized pockets. The other thing that I like to do, and I know that JL doesn't typically put her phone in her pocket, but I want to <laughs> pockets of holding. <laughs> I want to make sure that um, a pocket will fit a cell phone. So my cell phone is um, about six inches. I, because this pocket isn't like a really big pocket, like I have uh, like, I've made like really large patch pockets and they're a lot of fun, but this is a more delicate petite pocket. So um, it's about six inches. So let's 
go just to seven inches. That will make it just fit the phone. Um, so we know like our length is gonna be seven and it's within our, oh, can't even see my math over there. It's within our um, rule of thirds. Oh, that's funny. It shows a mirrored version of it. For Disney, it needs to be phone and snack friendly. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, Tiffany, I'm so glad you made it. Yay. Okay, so uh, the phone itself is about three inches, a little three and a quarter inches. But, of course, we don't want it to be just a phone pocket. So what I'm going to do is let's give it like... Let's try going with an inch and a half on each side. So let's make it six inches wide. We're going to start there. And even though our pocket, our pocket had rounded corners, we're going to start with it being a square pocket. So um, to get my right angle, I always, again, <laughs> can't say it enough how much I love Hey, hey, I can see you trying to break into the cabinet of curiosity over there. Good Lord, the problem with having smart cats, right? All right, so I use the edge of my ruler to start my right angle. And from here, I can go ahead and go to six inches and stop there. And now I'm going to take it nine inches up. And the reason why, like, I'm using a Sharpie so you guys can see better. But here's the thing, though, too, is um, um, I would I would typically suggest uh, Remus. You know, it's Remus. Um, I would definitely suggest using pen because Sharpie tends to be it's thicker. And um, so when you're measuring, you have to take that into account so that you're measuring inside the line instead of on the outside because that will start to make it a little bigger and a little bigger so here's our pocket this is without seam allowance or anything so if i stuck the phone in there it would be like that All right and i think that's pretty good right i think we can even make our seam allowances out of this so let's do this real quick guys Oh, no. Did you ever pull your drawer so far out? Oh, he got in. He has breached the security. Friday, he is so busted. <laughs> uh, uh, you have three cats, which is why I never successfully attempted to try to sew, even though I want to learn. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take one of my other markers, and I'm just going to draw of this my seam allowances um and so let's take a look at what five eighths of an inch seam allowances would look like now remember these seam allowances are sewing <clears throat> because since they're patch pockets they're going to be self-lined with the same fabric so that means that not only are we going to have the five eighths of an inch seam allowance, but then you're going to have to sew it. Oh, you can't even see this one. Oh, that's no, no bueno, no bueno, no bueno. Um, not only are we going to have that, but so it's going to make, it's going to start making it smaller and smaller and smaller, but this will give us an idea of what the finished dimensions would look like. If we took the seam allowances right off of what we have, let's try that. The red one looks better, a little better, a little bit better. So now the phone fits in there with a little bit of clearance on the side. So I've got a little about six eighths of an inch clearance, which I don't think is enough. So I think we need to add. Um, what do you guys think? Um, I would say let's add another, let's 
Um, what do we want to do? Is that a quarter of an, three eighths of an inch maybe? Yeah, let's do three eighths of an inch. Sounds like a, I'm adding it. <laughs> I'm like, why is that, why is that smaller? Is that how math works? All right, so we're gonna make this a little bit bigger. Um, doo -doo, doo -doo. I know, when are my videos ever this math heavy? And this is honestly, if, unless it's an Excel spreadsheet, is the only kind of math I like. I don't like any other kind of math. Because construction math to me is just a different part of brain than like, I mean, I know math is all math, but it's just a different part of the brain to me. Um, all right, so now let's take a look at what a five eighths of an inch seam allowance would look like on that. Yeah, and it's funny because almost all my patterns have like a bunch of random lines all over them. <laughs> Okay, so that's that stays. I kept that the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, why? Okay. For a minute, it was like the. Oh, this is dead too. I'm just not having any luck with uh, sharpies tonight. You use your hand to guess to make pockets. That's a great way to do it, too. Because there's nothing worse than making a pocket that's too small, right? Okay. So now, oh, that's much better. That's much, much better. So we're talking, it would be from here to here. I know that almost looks like the same from this angle, but gives us a lot more room. Now, let's talk about... Because remember, um, we're also coming in a little bit more on here, probably like two eighths of an inch to do uh, the seam on the outside of the patch pocket. So we need it to be enough to, uh, to accommodate for that. Now, before we get to the top flap, we're going to deal with the circular pattern down here. Because again, that pocket see it's circles. No idea what line is real. So this is a um, a styling design ruler. It's um, like a hip curve ruler. Um, I don't have, I have a lot of the fancy ones, but um, I never use them because I'm still, I'm all self-taught on pattern drafting and I, have, I need to take some more classes to learn more about pattern drafting, which is on my big like to-do list. So I'm gonna round that one off. And these are not gonna be perfect right now. This is from 30, it's starting at 30 at the top. Um, be 30, maybe it was 20. Um, because, um, I don't have the angles exactly matched on this, but that's okay. I'm just doing it for general idea right now. Um, when I cut it out for realsies, I will take into account. When I cut it out for real, I'm going to actually fold it in half so that the curves match exactly. And there's no ands, if, or buts that they're the same exact curve. But that's pretty darn close. So now we're going to actually cut, cut it out. Does anybody else do that from uh, Uncle Nate? Um, what was his name? Uncle, it was Uncle Jesse. Their dad's name was Danny. You know, the guy that a lot of some more sets sang about, Dave kool -Aid. What was his name in Full House? He always did that. Cut it out. Um, Uncle Buck. Uncle Joey. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Auntie. Um, 
Yeah, French curve. Joey, Uncle Uncle Joey? Uncle Joey. Um, at first it was cute. Like when I was younger, I was like, oh he's so funny. He's just such a dork. It's so cute. And now I'm like, every time he does it, I'm like, you just, just stop. Once is enough. Once is enough, Uncle Joey. Don't be that guy. Ah, uh, all right. So, if it happens to you, you're young at heart. I don't know why. I'm sorry. It's not. I'm not singing because I think I can sing. It just happens. Okay. So now I'm going to turn it over so we don't have to look at all the markings. We're going to set our phone in it. Joey. I'm too old to totally skip Full House. <laughs> um, it's okay. Uh, Joey, kiddo doesn't like it when I do it with her. <laughs> all right. So there's what we have so far for the pocket. Um, and I think that's looking pretty good, right? I think that curve works. Maybe, yeah, yeah. And I think it's pretty close to being the same. But let's go ahead and fold this in half and check out our curve. Make sure it. Oh. Oh my god, you guys, I'm so good at this. Oh my god, I should have like a YouTube channel. Okay. So <laughs> here's the other thing. It's again, uh, what is this? We made this nine inches tall, right? Nine inches tall. Did I make it nine? No, I made it more than nine. Like nine and a half inches. Okay, so now we need to think about the flippity flap, right? So um, if we're nine, I don't want to do, well, let's do it. nine, three. So rule of thirds on nine is three, six, seven, eight, nine. So now let's do, oh, Kristen, I'm so glad you made it out. And did the responsible thing of feeding your children. <laughs> Love it. Uh, things to my text. Oh, your phone is adding things to your text. That's funny. We're okay with it. We like it. All right. So the rule of thirds, because that would be three inches, right? And I don't think it's going to work with this pocket. So the pocket would look like that, which if we look at our reference photo, I don't like it, just so you know. It's too much. Um, just in case there were any doubts of what I was thinking about the pocket flap. And if we look at our reference photo, right, um, it's too much. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go with the rule of force. <laughs> so many rules. Um, but really... The reason for it is it just looks balanced then. If, if you go with just random numbers, um, it, it just a lot of times it will just look more balanced than if we just randomly choose something. And I know it was nine and a half and not nine, but that's OK. We're fudging things. So two, four, six, eight. So two and a half is four, right? No, two, four, six, eight. Two and a quarter. Eight, nine. Yeah, that would be nine and a half. Two and a quarter would be nine and a half. So let's try that and see what it looks like. Break the rules. Friday, no. No, I can't. I'm not a rule breaker. I remember this is our, um, this is the, fin I don't, that's not enough, not enough, too much, not enough, did I, that's not two and a half inches, that's not, I, oh, that's only one and a half, that's why it looks so weird, do, 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 do. Or two and a quarter is what we were doing. One, two, 
and a quarter. I have a feeling I'm going to like this, you guys. This is going to be it. I'm going to put a little star on it. And we're going to fold that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? I think so. I think so. And then the phone. Yeah, phone is going to clear, right? Um, so it's just going to fit the phone. JL, uh, I, I don't think you have, I think your phone is smaller than mine. So, um, yeah, it's just going to fit the phone wide enough for some snacks. But here's the thing is I really like this as the finished size. So what that means is I have to add seam allowances. I don't think I need to add it here so much. Well, let's take a look at that. Um, this is five eighths of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to draw that on this side so we know what our seam. I'm going to do five eighths, but then I'm going to do another quarter for, so this will show us where, the stitching is going to go on top of the patch pockets, right? And that will tell us exactly how it's going to look as far as um, finished, finished with, because that's all I'm looking at right now. Oh, what do we think? Is that too slim a profile? Do we need to, I, I think we do. I think we need to add maybe a quarter of an inch. What do you think? JL, if you're still here, this is your time to weigh in as far as how big your pockets actually are. <laughs> we are definitely, mm -hmm. let, me, let me put it right under you guys so you can get a true sense of um, the pocket and how it would look. So, um, I don't know. I think we do need to make it a little bit taller. I would draft it larger. For reference, my phone is six and three fourths inch long with case. What, really? Okay. Your phone is longer than mine? Why do I feel slightly offended by that? <sighs> Somebody doing dinner, it's lunchtime on Tuesday here. That's so funny. No, no, you didn't miss. Did you miss dinner? No, you didn't miss. Oh, did you miss? Well, we're going to redraft the pocket again. Um, it's not the size that counts. All right. So we are going to make this longer. She said, so let's just say her phone is seven inches, right? Um, Right now, this has a clearance of, okay. So right now... Right now, my phone has a clearance of half an inch. So let's say we did we did clearance of an inch and a half. Half an inch, an inch and a half. So let's do an inch and a half. So that would mean if her phone is seven, we're going to do eight and a half inches above. We're going to do eight and a half inches. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> well, Maria, I think it's because we're all honest with ourselves, right? That, <laughs> uh, It's just under six. Oh, it's just, oh no, it's just under six inches. I was going to say, I was going to say, I didn't think your phone, I thought my phone was bigger than your phone. So, um, <laughs> my phone again is like seven. Um, we're still going to do, okay. So we'll go with my phone for the base then. And I'm just copying out the base of the pocket without the flap. Do 
I like how I put makeup on. I did my hair, and yet I'm not showing you guys my face at all. Okay. So I wanted to do right now, this is an inch, a half an inch clearing. So I want to add another inch onto this. Let's go with another inch. And again, we're talking finished measurements right now, not seam allowance measurements for height. All right, so there we go. Um, I almost feel I almost um I almost feel like it's slightly too big now. Da 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 da. Mm. Let's see, with that on there. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna go with it. We're gonna go with it. Okay, so that means that all right, and then widthwise, widthwise might be okay with it. Widthwise, you know what we're gonna, you know what I think I'm gonna do. I'm just going to do half inch seams instead of five eighths seams on this. And this will give us a little more width to it. A little more girth. Okay. So what that means is now we have to add five eighths of an inch to the bottom of the. No, half an inch because I'm doing half inch seams. I'm going to add half an inch to the bottom. And I'm just going to do half inch seams there, which will add that quarter of an inch. That's that. Okay. And then this flap ends up being two and a quarter. So we're going to go two and a quarter for our flappy flap. All righty. See, that's why it's so hard with pockets because the pattern ends up looking so big, especially with patch pockets. <laughs> Kristen, Kristen wants to know if JL can fit her churros in here. Um, you know, I don't think Disney churros as are as long as like food truck churros, so I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So once again, I'm going to take my ruler and I am copying curve because I really like that curve and I'm just going to move it down. And then I'm going to wait on the, the and then what we're going to do as well, so we remember that two and a quarter is our flap. I'm going to do a dotted line right here, and we're going to say fold. Okay. So that way we remember, I'm going to do this. So that I know that that doesn't mean anything. And I know that that doesn't mean anything. And we're going to say patch pocket. And then I say half inch seam allowance. Okay. So now we can go ahead and cut it out. <laughs> they will fit. Super jealous we were supposed to go to Disneyland last May. Oh, well, I'm really hoping that you'll be able to either get it to do it this year or next year then. I am super excited that um, I actually have some travel plans this year. So one of them is um, actually to go see JL in a couple months. 
which her and I have been trying to like see each other ever since like uh, Viva th fell through and you know she was going to come here and help me out with you know everything going on with the house and just you know being a friend and being emotional support system during the awful time and uh we couldn't that couldn't happen because of the panty and then things were we thought things were going to get better so i booked another flight to come out and see her and then um things didn't get any better in fact they got worse <laughs> we rescheduled again so fingers crossed it'll actually happen i'm a bit nervous about flying though you know um so we'll see. I figure I'm just going to bring like two masks and I hear like they're um, putting more space between people, which will be nice. And I'm hoping the plane won't be as crowded and all that kind of stuff. So we'll see. I'll have anxiety about it. But, you know, I figure I'm always going to have anxiety the first time we start, you know, doing stuff that's more normal, you know, like it was in the before times. <laughs> uh, it's happening. Flights are really cheap right now, right? I got a flight to Boston for 50 bucks. Uh, you're going to a concert. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Just get vaccinated. Oh, I'm already vaccinated. So I've been vaccinated for a while now. So um, because fortunately, because of my age and some other issues, I was able to get my vaccine pretty, 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 pretty quickly. All right. So now I'm going to fold that line down real quick. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I guess you did, you flew to Nola then, right? Where are we? <laughs> we have just, I think, just finished uh, building the patch pocket for the skirt. And I think that looks really good. So we're going to have this flippy flap here. Flippy flapping, flippy flapping. Flippy flapping, flippy flapping. And I'm going <laughs> to write on here, cut four, because we'll need an inside. An outside and an inside and an outside. Nice. Yay. How was your um Sunray, how was your flight to um Nola? Everything cool? It was pretty like comfy and all that kind of stuff. I'm flying spirit though, so I'm sure it'll be a completely different experience. Uh, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this puppy a couple times so that I only have to cut the pockets once. So it won't fit this way, but I am going to, let's do this one more time, fold it a little bit better, better. I'm sorry for anybody who actually has an accent because I don't know. I guess, I guess I'm sad. I just don't have, well, I guess I do have an accent when I speak German, but I do not speak it very well. Okay. That's not too bad. That's not too bad on fabric waste. Okay. So now, now we take a moment to think to ourselves, am I forgetting something? We have seam allowances. We added seam allowances here. Did we add it here? Did we add it? No, we didn't, did we? I did not. That's two and a quarter. I did not add a seam allowance at the top because that's folding there. That still needs a seam allowance, right? Seam allowance. I need a seam allowance at the top. 
Um, now I just gotta remember where I put my tape. And I know it's somewhere where I was like, I probably should put that on the table. I'm probably gonna need it. And then I was like, no, you won't. You won't, you won't need it. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna talk to my face for a little bit. Because I don't know that you need to see. Ooh. You tell me, do you wanna see me adding a seam allowance to the top of this pocket? Or would you rather look at my hair? Um, let's see. Uh, you have a little bit of a Midwestern accent. Oh, I do. Thanks, Kristen. It comes out, I feel like, a little bit more uh, when I've had a couple drinks. Like the Chicago side of me comes out a little bit. Um, oh, Maria, do I have a pattern that I completely love the pockets that it's your go to, or do you always make yours? Um, I actually, my, um, patch pockets, I, I do have like a basic pattern for them. Um, but patch pockets, I tend to change a lot, um, because there's just a lot of fun things you can do with patch pockets. I do have a, um, I have one pattern for like on seam, like side pockets that go in, inside, in, in seam side pockets. I have um, a pattern that I actually drafted from an old skirt. Um, actually, it was like a little dress. I'm really, for some reason, just these pockets were the perfect depth for like my phone, but it wasn't like overly big where I was putting too much in it and like weighing my pockets down. It was just perfect. It was the Goldilocks of pockets. Um, and that one, I, that one I use constantly when I'm doing, um, that type of pocket. I don't change those too much. And then I have the, like, um, again, I'm all self-taught, so I don't know a lot of times I'm still learning like the proper words for things. Um, but the, uh, like the jean pockets, like the U pockets, I have a very particular one for that, but, um, Oh, I guess I, you know what? I do have, I do have one. Like my favorite pocket that I ever, ever drafted is I had made um, when I was still doing uh, my Atomic Starlet store, I had made a bat skirt for Halloween, um, which um, is one of the, most of my skirts sold out, which is great. Um, but this one was like the skirt, like, Ooh, I did it as a pre-order and it sold out right away. And that, oh, it was like a bat wing pocket. Mm, love it. It was the perfect pocket. Maybe I'll have to, maybe I'll have to do a video and share the uh, template for that pocket. <laughs> All right. Now, <laughs> he is a pretty kitty. That's the one that broke into the cabinet of curiosities. Um... I don't think you added it to the flap. Yep, you're right, Jail. Kitty. It's back to Remus. Um, they are temporary. Check everyone. You must wear, and you must wear a Mac, but not spread, spacing out the seats, which was annoying. You take no cash in airport carrier credit card. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, I'm going to bring like my fabric mask and then I'm going to bring a disposable because I feel like I might double mask it on the plane just because I, you know, and not even this, but like I get colds uh, like after traveling, I tend to like get a little sick because it's recycled air, you know, and if somebody has a cold, you're more likely to catch it. So I feel like I might just double mask it for, you know, whatever reason. I don't know. Double the fun, maybe. <laughs> I know I might be ridiculous, but whatever. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, right? As long as you're wearing something on your face. Uh, oh, Rubies, I'm sorry. Thanks, Jail. Oh, yay. Yeah, that is my favorite pocket. That is, Cheryl, I'm not going to lie. That skirt I did for you is still one of my favorite skirts I've ever made. 
Like there's some that I was like, okay, those were cute. I really liked it. But there are others I'm like, mmm, mmm, so good. Boop, 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 boop. So all I did was I taped on some extra paper and then just added it right up at the top there. Um, and I know, and, and, and if that's something you you really, really want to see, I know the other live stream was like two hours long. Um, and I think it probably was about halfway through. Um, but I did, um, have to add on to that pattern as well. So if you want to see how you can add on to a pattern, that's, um, a good reference for you. Ba -do -ba -do. Yay, I'm glad you still like it. That makes me happy. <laughs> JL is probably like, I think has pretty much every, almost every Atomic Star skirt I've made. And then uh, I always do a Viva skirt for her every year. And Heather, when she goes, I tend to, I don't know. That's just something fun to do for my friends. And, um, Skirts are pretty easy for me. Like they make, they just make sense in my head. Um, bodices don't yet. Um, I'm hoping to get there someday. Um, they're starting, they're starting to get a little better. Like the more and more that I um, pattern grade and make changes to patterns, um, the more it makes starts to make sense because it's it's like your brain starts to understand that you know for this type of look you need a dart versus like um like princess seam or something like that it just starts to make a little bit more sense um okay so now i think we officially have everything cut out for the skirt. So, okay, I'm sorry you're gonna have to hear that. He is a digger, digger when he goes to the bathroom, so. Yes, my, I have, oh, if, um, cause I have a really small house, so I have to be, I don't have a lot of options for litter boxes, but I, have a air purifier in here as well. And the, the, I have the, if you have cats, but um, what is it? It's the breeze litter box. Tidy cats breeze litter box has been a game changer for me. Game changer. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about it. So, um, all right. So what I'm going to do really quick is we're going to talk through the construction process for this because this will number one it'll help me determine if i've missed anything it will help me determine the easiest order of operations for the skirt so um oh, well it really is the top of my head D dress bodices with your with pin tucks are your new obsession oh you have the jail tears you downsize the 3x for me that's interesting Easy fat. It is very cute, isn't it? Proudly. Trying to dig to China. <laughs> yeah. Kitty got to do what Kitty got to do. Oh, Jay, you're funny. Yay, Miss Margaret. I'm so glad you made it here. I'm glad I moved the um, camera because there's a secret. There's secret video stuff in here that I don't want to spoil. I'm so excited about. Okay. So do I have a normal pen? Do I? Do I have a normal pen? Um. Oh, do I have a normal pen? Not within reach of me right now. So Sharpie it is. Maybe I can do. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do a thin Sharpie. All right. So, um, I'm, this is all, you're talking to my table tonight. Uh, your sewing room is big. secret. It is. <laughs> um, all right. So, and this is, I'm going to do, um, cause you guys know I'm redoing the house. Um, I'm almost, 
got some more changes to the kitchen and the next is painting the hallway in the living room and but the sewing room i have big plans for it so right now like everything's in here kind of that's gonna be in here but like the styling of it i'm actually gonna do a video for which i'm excited but that won't be for quite a few months yet because traveling is taking all my home decor budget right now okay so down to the table so what i like to do when trying to figure <laughs> just push all the mess to the side Oh, I know. I paint on here, too, which makes it look hideous. This, um, it, Ruby's, it is my new house, but it's, um, also not because it's my childhood home. I, my mom and dad built this house in, uh, 58. So I, when my mom passed, I decided that I was initially just going to stay here to kind of, like, slap a fresh coat of paint on her and make her look good. But then I decided because I was looking for houses and I was looking for fifties ranches. And I was like, why would I buy somebody else's fifties ranch when I can buy the one my dad built? So, um, yeah, uh, I was a little worried that it would feel like, I was a little worried it would feel like I was living in the past. You know what I mean? Like I was stuck in like a perpetual loop of my own past. Um, but making all the changes and, making it feel very uniquely mine has gone a long way to not making it feel that way. And I will say this sewing room was actually my parents' bedroom <laughs> because I was like, I don't know. It's the biggest, it's the biggest room in the house and I would rather it be my sewing crafting room because I just sleep in my bedroom. So, you know, options, right? Okay. <sighs> Ah, so let's see. So when I'm trying to figure this out, the easiest thing for me to do is the back is the back. There's nothing special about it. So I'm not going to, and I can't draw. So you got to run to the quick stop. Be back in a bit. Oh, yay. We'll look forward to seeing you back. Oh, thank you, Jay. You know, it, do, it does mean a lot, especially considering that my, my dad and um, all my uncles helped to build this house like there's so much history and love that was put into it and i like to think my mom and dad are happy that i decided to keep the home that they so lovingly built all right so here we have the front of the skirt right Ooh. and i'm gonna draw it this way because this is kind of how the pattern goes right because it's a three four circle skirt so um on the one side, we have the buttons. Boop, 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 boop. And then the, on the other side, we have the buttonholes. Now, here's a very important thing. I wish I could zoom you in. There we go. I know. I know. Should be in the Louvre. Here's the thing. The first time I ever made a button front skirt, and it was for JL as well. Are you French theming the skirt panels? No, I am not. Um, I, I have a serger and I find that the, um, that I don't, to me, I don't need to take the extra step to the French seam, but I know a lot of people like it. Um, the important thing to remember is that the buttonhole on the top, wait, <laughs> buttonhole on the top goes this way, right? You don't want it to go up and down because then it will slip lower. It'll end up being like this. All right, because the button will be here and then the top of your thing is going to be there. So you want your buttonhole to go to the side. Now, I'm trying to decide right now whether I want the buttonholes going horizontal down the rest of the skirt or if I want them going vertical. <sighs> I've seen it both ways. Jail, weigh in and let me know if you have a preference. But I think, I think that I am going to do them this way. Oop. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So... The first thing that, and these are all going to have like a little flap on the interior. 
Here, we're going to redraw these. Because I don't like it. Okay. I don't like that. I made a mistake. Okay. So we're going to do this. Buttonhole is going to be like that. But it's going to be over here. And we're going to have that. It's going to be like that. This is going to have a flap to it. We have this. And this is going to have a flap to it, too. Boop. Okay. Um, start cutting and serging before I sew seams. I find it easier on skirts. Uh, yeah. It all depends. For me, it depends on what seam it is. I kind of do a mishmash. Don't we all have a flap? <laughs> Miss Margaret, you are exactly where you need to be, my friend. Okay. And then we have three, four, things like that. One, two, three, four, five. I think is what we decided was five buttons down the front. Now, this flap, this one here, is part of the skirt. Part of skirt. This one here is sewn. So thinking about this is that this flap needs to be on the skirt before I put the waistband in because the flap needs to be inside. So we don't want to do it after the waistband is put on. So the first thing we want to do, I believe, is we are going to sew on the butt. We're just going to call it BH for buttonholes. So we're going to sew bh flap on now here's the thing though if we look at our reference picture every time i make a skirt the waistband ends up too big too big um you're probably i'm guessing you know it happens a lot because we want to make sure our waistbands are comfortable um so what i would do is uh figure out what your uh, waistband is too big by, take that off and or measure a skirt that's already made and um, use that. And then because once you get a waistband pattern drafted, you can use it every single time. Even if you're using a different pattern company, you can always use your own waistband. You don't have to use theirs. So um, if we can see on the skirt right here, we have the zigzag going down the BH side, right? So that means our zigzag is going to be here. Now that's going to be inside the seam. So that has to be put on before we sew the, the buttonhole flap onto the skirt. So attach <laughs> flap. Rick rack. <laughs> Somebody needs to name their flap a Rick rack. <laughs> oh no! It's okay. Um. Hey, Robin. I, you know, when you first said that, I don't even think I realized it was you talking. But hi, hi! I'm very excited. All right. So once that's there, we can sew those two pieces together. Once those are sewn together. I always like to attach my um, waistbands. Now, here's the thing, is because these are um, finished edges here, um, we need to think about that. So we're going to need to sew up the sides of those as well while it's still inside out. But... If those edges are sewn already, it's going to be hard to attach it here. So what we're going to do is um, we are going to attach the waistbands then we'll finish waistband opening that makes sense um well i guess technically it only needs to make sense to me right um then so that will be on that will be on the back will be done already 
Hem is always the last thing we do. So now, um, before we get into the pockets or the buttons, I think we need to put the pockets on, which are a little bit difficult to do on a circle skirt just because of the way the um, buttonhole flap is separate with zigzag in between. Buttonhole flap is... Yeah. Kind of night. <laughs> Eat dinner and get all lost. Was the buttonhole flap separate? Yes. Um, on this side, it's separate. So, um, but that brings up a good question. I got to ask is, okay. Now I did check the waistband to see if the Rick Rack was on the waistband at all. And it's not. So cut your waistband from the selvage sides or the top and bottom of the fabric. That is, I missed that somehow. Tiffany. Um, that all depends on your fabric. Um, the best way to decide is to, because what we're asking about is from the selvage side. So from, so this finished side is always your selvage. Um, so your fibers are running this way and then they're running this way. Fabric will always have a natural stretch to it. And when you go on an angle, you're going to have a lot more stretch. So, um, and the more angular you go, and that's called the bias, right? So, um, it, you never want to cut on an angle like this unless you're specifically looking for a lot of stretch. Because the problem is, is bias cuts can also, if you don't do it exactly, it will warp and distort over time. So, what... Um, Robin is asking is if it's okay to go this way to cut your waistband out or to go this way. So you have to know your fabric. So um, if I pull on it this way, right, there's not really any stretch to it. If I pull on it this way, there's a little bit of give and stretch. So um, if you want your waistbands to be a little bit more comfortable, I would cut it salvage to salvage. Can you cut it the other way? Yes. You're just not going to get as much stretch out of your waistband. Now, you will always have it backed in a interfacing, which will prevent it from overly stretching, right? So if you can kind of see how far I can stretch that, see? Like, you wouldn't want it to always be stretching that much, which is what that fusible interfacing will help with. But if you go this way, it's not going to stretch at all. I hope that helps. All right, so finish the waistband opening. And then we're going to attach pockets. And then we are going to do the buttonholes. And then we're going to put on the buttons. And then we're going to hem the baby up, right? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. What am I missing? Ah, yes. Ah, yes. So we have this assembly, right? So this is the skirt assembly. And then after we do the hem, we're going to attach the rick rack at the hem. So here is our pocket assembly. <laughs> so our pocket has rick rack at the, at the top of the flap. So we want to attach the rickrack first, then um, mm -hmm. once we do that, then we'll do the hem and then turn it and then, and then iron it really. I don't need to write it, but that would kind of be the, the so that is kind of our order of business if anybody wants to it kills me that it's I hope you guys can read backwards because I don't know how to make that not backwards ah. okay so the question becomes obviously I'm probably going to only um, probably not going to go over two hours on the live stream again because that's just so the question is, do you want, what do you guys want to see? 
do you want to see um, me attaching the buttonhole flap with the rickrack on the side of the skirt? So do you want to see this going on? Or do you want to see the pocket assembly? Let me know. I'm just I'm just waiting on the comments. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have some soda while I wait for you guys to tell me what I'm doing. Yeah, we are. That's the first things we're gonna do. We're gonna attach the rick rack and then we're going to do the buttonhole flap. Um, this flap on this side is already there, so it'll just get folded. Buttonholes, both. Uh, we'll, Maria, we'll see what we can get done. Uh, rick, 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 buttonhole flap. Okay, so we're going to go buttonhole flap. So I'm going to let all of this void. All right, so this is the back piece, so I need the buttonhole side. I'm like, what I do with the pattern? There it is. Um, okay, so the one without, that's the, uh, right here. Been sitting on it all night. Okay, don't need that. Don't need that. Okay. So, the, one of the ways I know that, um, <laughs> The um, buttonhole side is going to be the smaller one because, again, this one is already built onto it, and we're just going to iron that over. So this is our piece that we're going to attach the rick rack and the buttonholes to. So I'm going to be working with that straight edge of the fabric. I know this fabric's a little wrinkly, but it is what it is, right? Okay. So I have my diagram right over here. And where's that piece that I, all right. <laughs> oh, there it is. But oh, all right. So we're gonna, we have our long piece. That is our flap. And then we have our edge. So there are a couple ways to do this into a flap. I've had a shirt that needed to do it for years. Well, it's not necessarily going to be sewn into the flap, but basically what this flap is for is um, we're going to interface this flap, but you never want a buttonhole to go through a single piece of fabric because this is not strong enough to support it. So it's always good practice to back your where your buttons are and where your buttonholes go. If you look inside a lot of um, shirts, you'll see that there's a little facing is the right for, word for it. Thank you, uh, Sunray. Uh, but here's the thing is we are going to stitch these together and this seam will be hidden inside here. This is gonna show, this part of our facing here is gonna show. So I am going to serge one side of this um, and not the other side. So I will do that before attaching the two pieces together. But what I also need to think about it's still gonna be my buttonholes, right? So buttons go like right over left, right? I got a coat. I got a coat staring at me in the face. The buttonholes are on the right hand side. Okay. So <laughs> that means this side of our fabric is the front of the fabric. Always mark your front and back of the fabric, especially on fabrics that don't have a wrong side. Um, basically, a wrong side is just the side that ginghams don't do this, but typically, if you have a, a 
I have a perfect way to show you guys right and wrong. Okay. When you have fabric, that is printed on the fabric so the color isn't in the in the weaves it's on the weaves you will have a very colorful side of the fabric and you will have a back side of the fabric so this is the wrong side and this is the right side but when you don't have that inside outside i always use pins to mark what is the front of my fabric and this is especially important when you're doing black fabric even though it's gonna look the same on the both sides. Believe me, there can sometimes be a very subtle difference between the inside of black fabric and the outside of black fabric. This is very much coming from experience on that one. Um, flaps are the new folds. Flaps are so versatile. They are, so many flaps, all the flaps. And this sounds like a dance move, Rick, Rock, Rick Rack and Flap It. <laughs> Uh, if Emily was here, she put it in our coordinated swim routine. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, they are different sizes, sides, which is weird. I, I don't know if that's just a way of differentiating, uh, m m you know, menswear versus women's wear. You flaps of steel. Okay. So we are now, I'm going to take you, I am going to take you guys over to the machine here because the first thing we're going to, well, the ironing machine, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put interfacing on our long strip of fabric. Do I want to interface that? No, I want to interface the back of the skirt because that's going to be what. And the reason why I'm, I'm thinking I want to do that is because that's where all the threads are. Well, I mean, the threads are going through both, but the threads are going through the top. And I feel like it's always interfaced on the outside fabric. So that's what we're going to go with. Um, your aunt sewed a shirt from my mom. It looks like it came from the store. Oh, wow. Rubies, that's cool. Jail? Well, I guess I can, since I'm looking, and go ahead and uh, remove. Uh, that when you go to take clothes off another person, it's the same as doing your own. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. I never even thought about that. Okay. So I'm going to cut out interfacing. For the flap, which was, I think we did two and a half inches. Okay. Da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. And I'm going to kind of cheat it up a little bit and use the selvage side of the interfacings. <laughs> I don't only have to cut three sides instead. Alrighty, here we go. Here we go. What's your secret? Um, and again, um, you know, I, I just know a lot of people when they sew, like they get really worried about like the edges being absolutely perfectly straight and will take them five years to cut out not that i know somebody that does this and that's not jail um it will take them five years to cut out a pattern piece and nothing ever gets done because it takes so long so and i get it i get it because a part of you is like you know i don't want the structure of it to be wrong um but again it's it's one of those things like you can't let the idea of perfectionist perfectionism stop you from actually completing things. And for me, a lot of times with sewing, um, at least with sewing my own clothes, that's always what stopped me from doing it was like, I'm going to mess it up. It's going to be terrible. But, you know, if your if your hem has a, you know, your cut has a jagged edge or something like that, 
like as long as things are not you know completely off um you can fix a lot of it inside your seam allowance you know so we need to be we need to not be so hard on ourselves especially when creating and the thing too is like you get better as you go like when i first started sewing i wouldn't even do mock-ups you know i would just sew because i just i just wanted to go from like item to finish i just wanted to have like a finished dress or a finished skirt or whatever it was um but the better i got at certain things and um <laughs> while i'm doing my ted talk i am going to pause my ted talk just say for the interfacing we are doing it on the inside of the fabric so the wrong side of the fabric you do not want this on the outside of your skirt and this is a uh, fusible interfacing. Um, it is specifically for um, a fashion apparel. It is a little bit lighter. Um, and then you're just going to go, you can kind of feel for a fusible fabric, it feels like bumpy on one side and that's your glue. So that's the side you're going to put down. <laughs> I'll get as close to you guys as I can. All right. I can't, I can't read your, uh, anything going on. So I'll check up on comments when I'm done ironing. But back to my TED Talk. Um, um, you can't you can't let it stop you from Oh, I cut that perfectly. You can't let it stop you from creating or starting, you know, because like I said, you're gonna get better as you go. The more you do it, the more, um, you know, the first time you might cut a corner here. But the next time you're going to push yourself a little farther and a little farther. Um, and then you're once you're comfortable with certain things, you're probably you're going to start trying new things, you know. Um, so don't expect perfect. I cannot believe I cut this exactly to the length I needed. <laughs> but yeah, you're you're. I mean, you're extremely lucky if it if it is perfect the first time around. And I would say you have a natural talent for it, but um, you know, even even the people that have made names for themselves in industries like this, they didn't all start out being perfect. Got to start out imperfect. What do they say? It takes like ten thousand hours to become an expert at something. So, ten thousand hours. All right. All right, so um, that to me. Oh, women had servants to dress them versus men dressed themselves, according to Google. Wow, that's very interesting. Can you please move the camera so we can see what you're doing? Hopefully that was a little bit better, Kristen. That is the top. It is. I have it at the, at the highest setting because I had to iron so much. My uh, my back would start to hurt. So start, oh, the mantle hung over the left shoulder. Oh, interesting. Oh, thanks. This is from Joanne's. I bought all their Simplicity Vintage. Present Instagram. Yes. Cover. <laughs> no, I am very short. I'm only like 5'3. It slow is okay. How many I have with my oh nice. Dumped into my shopping cart the other day. <laughs> oh hi, Rainbow Sprinkles. Okay, so let me get my Rick Rack, which I think is underneath all this idioms. And this is, oops. This is just the medium Rick Rack. There is um, jumbo Rick Rack. But I'm, um, and I, the best thing you can do always is to like lay it out onto your fabric how it's going to look. So basically, 
I think I already put away the jumbo, but basically it's going to kind of peek out like this. And the jumbo just looked way too big um, and it didn't have the um, look that I wanted it to. So that's how I determined that the medium was going to be the best rickrack. Now, what I am going to do is we know that um, our, our, so basically, hey, uh, <laughs> you do, I feel bad for lefties. All right, so essentially what's going to end up happening is we're going to end up taking this piece of fabric, sewing them together, and then turning them around this way. So the um, rickrack is going to sandwich right in the middle of the fabric here. So the problem is, is you can't lay your rickrack like this because then it would be inside the seam allowance and that would not be pretty at all. So we are going to take... What do I want to use? I have, you know, let me know, you guys, um, what uh, you like to transfer markings. Do you like the the chalk? Do you like the, and you know, the disappearing ink ones? Which ones do you like? Because I feel like I keep going back and forth between all of them because I cannot find one that I really, really like. Um, let me see, let me see, oh, there it is, okay, okay, so this is going to be really, really scary, um, these things, shit happens all the time, um, these things are a little scary, they're, um, uh, ink be gone, so basically it is disappearing ink. So, um, <laughs> there are two ways I could do this. There are two ways I could do this because I could make the mark on here because basically I need to, I like disappearing ink, not in a situation that needs to be like iron. Yeah. Watermark pens that disappear, which I think is what this is. Crayola washable markers, the cover. Like I've used this in the past and it's come out. I just find like these dry out really, really quickly. So what I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to attach the Rick rack to this because that way I can place my mark on here and I don't have to worry like if for some reason it didn't come out, it's not going to show. Yeah. So because of that, I am, because you can see that this is kind of, blah, I am going to iron this really quick. So back up here to, to my extremely tall ironing board. Um, I just this year ended up getting um, a ham, like a tailor ham, to iron on. Oh, my God. It's a game changer, especially for, like, you know, princess seams. Mm, love it. Okay. Probably as straight as she is going to get. Um... Miss Margo, wheel cutters. I forgot the real name. Yeah, of course. Here for right handed people. Oh, oh. They should, you would think they would have left handed uh, rotary cutters by now. I mean, come on. This is the 21st century. <laughs> All right. So, because this is the way my brain works. This is the way my brain works. I have to lay these out together. These are the edges that are going to. So this is where I want the Rick Rack, right? So this is my seam allowance. So my five eighths is going to be here. So let's mark five eighths just on a little test section. Okay. 
I know, right? Isn't that blue mark? I know you can barely see it. That blue mark, it's so terrifying. So with my five eighths, that way I can just line my rickrack up there. So this is going to be, I know it's just weird. Like I just have to make sure that my brain, so when I fold it over, it's going to end up looking like that. Okay, cool. Cool. So, you know, so that that's just a way of my brain being like, okay, you want to be like right there and it's your, your line is in the right place, yada, yada. So, um, And um, because I don't trust my serger to, to be perfect, like I feel like I can watch where the needles go a lot better on um, trim type of stuff when I'm using my regular sewing machine. And because the seam is going to be inside the flap, um, I'm okay with just uh, using my pinking shears on um, the inside of the seam. So um, we're going to do this on the regular machine. And if, if, if we get to, I uh, wish that I could, can I bring you guys closer here? Let me see. Ooh, oh, you guys, look what I just figured out. Oh, that's so much better. It's like 10,000 times better. Don't you wish I would have figured that out last stream? <laughs> uh it is a work in progress. All right. So I'm just lining up my five eighths of an inch. This I do want to try and be as precise as I can. And I'm just going to lightly, lightly draw. And I feel like, you know what? It's also okay if the line isn't completely solid, you know, like if there was a gap or something in the line, because we'll be able to kind of see it. All right. There we go. Game changer. Um, I haven't yet. But of course, I'm always worried about it, which is why um, I'm doing it on the part that's going to be on the inside. So that way, if something were to happen and it didn't come out, it's not going to be seen. Uh, what did I miss? Jill wearing every last set. I haven't found a use for my arts degree. Jill, what did I miss? What did I miss? I feel like Jill said something. I'm oh, there it is. I had a couple people like those washable Crayolas then, huh? I'll have to give them a try. I've never sewn rickrack. Are you going to be centering the rickrack on your line? And then, yep, exactly. And then sewing straight down the center. Mm -hmm. Because and that is because I just want the the lovely uh, rickrack humps to show up on um, the outside. I'm not gonna see the whole thing, so it's kind of so we'll just see the top edge. Um, and then because remember when I did this, um, I did not measure it because I wanted to make sure I didn't end up with uh, less than I needed because I don't want to. Um, use more rickrack than I need to. I'm actually going to trim it because I can see the fabric below it. I'm just going to trim what I don't need because, you know, that's a couple inches of rickrack. And that couple of inches could be my humps, my humps, my lovely rickrack humps. Oh my God. This would be so fun. I feel like we would get so nothing. I, you know what? Maybe we would get more things done if it was in person. I am loving the fact that I figured out I can extend this thing over here. Okay. Also, one thing to remember is this side of it, you can barely see the blue line. This side of it is the seam. So this, we just want to make sure that our humps are out here. So this is the side we really need to keep an eye on. So all I'm going to do is, 
And if anything, I'm going to err on the side of being more this way than that way. I'm not going to lie, this um, trim on the yellow totally makes me think of Trixie Mattel. Okay. And um, you can definitely go all the way down the trim and um, stitch, stitch, stitch. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, am I? What am I going to do here? I could, if I could, I would. Because I could save myself some time, you know? And I could do this. Be a bit of a blind because this is what I'm thinking. Let me know. If I stitch all the way through this right now and then attach this to that, there's always a chance that you're going to be able to see the stitching line on the outside of this. Because if I'm not exact on that five eighths. So, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. what I could do is I could sew. That's what we're going to do. We're going to sew just inside. So I might, like, when I'm sewing, I'm not going to go right up the middle. Do I want to do that? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Without the League of Decency, we dissolve. 5 a.m. <gasps> Jill, you made it. I didn't even realize it was Jill from Sweden. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Jen, make sure it's that same. My lovely Rick Rack Humps and you'll buy it. <laughs> Love it. Um, if you're using right thread, it wouldn't matter. True. We should not be left alone. Right? All right. So we're going to stitch this down. And because of that, I'm not going to pin the rest of it down. I'm going to kind of feed it through the machine. So I'm going to see what I can do, because you guys are kind of on an arm. You know what I mean? Oh, oh well, you're, you're, oh, you're coming off, whoop, coming off the table. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. So naughty. Okay. Oh, well, it came off the table, so I can kind of bring you over here. Oh my gosh. I, I think the side of the room is clean. <laughs> Um, let me pull this out a little bit more. And, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. I'm screwing you guys the wrong way. <laughs> Everything sounds dirty tonight. I'm not going to lie. Okay. We're just going to pull this out a little bit. I'll make it a little easier. Oh, my God. You guys are going to see all the dirt on my floor. <laughs> it's like a little tabletop thing. I know. This is fascinating viewing, isn't it? Okay. You can kind of see yeah, you can kind of see that, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me just screw us the right way. Oh, the price you saw on mine hit a leap or two hours ago. Oh. I'm determined to get this flap on. You always knew you had a loose screw. Okay, so right now, um, I actually have gray thread in my machine. Which gray thread is actually great to have around. I'm going to change it out for white, though. So let me go under your wires right now and grab white. Um, what did I do with my bobbins? Um, but the reason why I really, really like gray thread. Oh, I don't have a white. I don't know. There's a bobbin on the floor. I'm just a mess. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> See if I can at least while I there we go. Um, the reason why I really, really, really like uh, gray thread for my machine is it is a really great like. Is my machine not plugged in? Oh my Atlanta. You would think I wasn't live streaming tonight. There we go. Um, the reason why I really like gray thread is it is a really great color when you don't know what color to use because sometimes white is too bright for what you're doing and gray really blends into a lot of colors. So it's a really, really versatile thread. Um, I actually have a darker gray and then I have like a really pale gray as well. So um, I always recommend having some of that on hand. Jay, I didn't realize you were in New Zealand. Mad at the hot Aussies. It's freezing here in New Zealand. <laughs> oh, button. I feel bad. It was 90 here today, um, which is not normal for this time of year, but um, it's a bit crazy. So what, for those of you that have sewing machines, what do you sew on? Um, I currently sew on uh, Viking machines. Um, oh, I have my doopy. I have my uh, blind hem foot on. Both uh, my serger and my sewing machines are Vikings. Um, I know Janome's are really popular. Singer just isn't what it used to be. Um, I have a couple of like vintage singers that I love, um, but I don't sew too, too much anymore, uh, just because they're problematic at this point, but they're uh, a great cost effective machine, especially if you're just getting started. Um, I've never sewn on a brother. The reason why I don't have a Janome is when, oh, why am I taking the thread off of that? is when I was looking for a machine, I went for a serger, I went to the Janome store and I pretty much was like, hey, I've never used a serger before. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna like a serger, if I'm gonna find that it's easy to use. Like I was really intimidated by sergers. I was like, what? Um, and the woman was like trying to sell me like a $4,000 serger, right? Basically saying like, if I didn't buy this serger, I would hate it. I wouldn't be able to operate it, blah, 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 blah. And she was such a raging bitch um, that I was just like, you know what? I bought the cheapest serger from them um, and it broke pretty quickly. Then she claimed it broke because I didn't know what I was doing. And I was like, well, it could potentially have been that. But it was like the way she said it that just really kind of like put me off. And she's like, well, we'll fix it for free this time. But if it, again, we're going to charge you a lot of money. And she made me come take a class with them. And it's like, you know, if you knew it was my first serger, why didn't you offer me a class the first time around? Why is it only after the machine broke on me? You know? So when, you know, I used that machine for a while, but because of the volume that I was doing, it broke fairly quickly, but from overuse. Um, so I ended up buying, I think it's like $2,500 serger. But again, it was for my business at the time. Um, so it was like a business investment. And uh, freaking loved it. But I was like, you know, I could that sale could have been yours, but never will buy a Janome now because of her. Oh, I know. You have a basic old Janome. Okay. So um, I really like my Viking, though. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, like, what machine they should get. And honestly, I feel, of course, this is not bending like the like it did the last time, but asking me, like, what a really good, like, starter 
machine is. And I always feel like your starter machine is never your forever machine. So it's really hard to say. I, I really think, you know, a lot of the machines like basic is good on them. I just say look for something that has a really easy buttonhole system and uh, will help you thread the machine. <laughs> Those are my those are my two requirements. I feel like if your machine has those, um, you can pretty much do anything, right? Because I feel like those are the three two like big pains in the butt when it comes to sewing machines. So I'm just kind of um, sewing without pins. I just take it down a little bit to the edge of my machine, make sure it's nice and flat. And then I hold that and I don't, you never want to like pull on your machine, but I hold it taut so that it doesn't really shift around. With some fabrics, you can't do this with because it'll just naturally shift on the fabric. You know what kind I'm talking about, the slippery ones. Um, so, but cotton, I think as well for like first projects, work with a cotton. Don't try to work with any like super fancy materials because they're just harder to work with. And you want your first project to be something that doesn't like super frustrate you. Oh, and what's nice, mine has an automatic cutter. That's a really nice feature because then you're not like constantly reaching for your scissors. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my skirt. And for this, I'm going to pin at the top because basically I just want to make sure that my fabric is evenly distributed. It's not really a, so much about holding the fabric in place as it is making sure that everything lines up nicely. Most patterns will have like little like matching marks, but because uh, we self-drafted, I did not put them in on the skirt because it's pretty easy to do it manually. So I just pop a couple in. And you can definitely sew something like this without putting pins in, but I just like to pop in a couple because then that way I can make sure that my top and my bottom line up really nicely. If you have like, um, sorry, the, the computer is behind me, so I can't really see if there's any questions or anything. Um, so... If you have any questions, I will let you know when I'm back at looking at the computer. So I would just ask you then at that point to repeat them so I could see them. So I probably will go back through and try to try to see what you guys are talking about. Like I can't hear you. <laughs> and now I'm just doing my thing. I just have a piece of tape here. I don't, oh, you can't even see that, I don't think. I have a piece of tape on my machine for 5 eighths just because it's a little easier to remember the five eighths. But for this, I have my stitch line to guide me. So I'm just gonna try to sew right over the stitch line that I stitched the brick rack down with. Or again, making sure I stay just on this side of it so it's not seen on the other side of the fabric. Um, I do always try to remove my pins just because if you don't, one of these days you will uh, <laughs> sew right over it and it will snap your needle, which um, I probably say I'm a little more reckless with it than most people just because I wear glasses and I feel like I'm wearing protective lenses. 
but especially if you don't wear glasses, uh, make sure that uh, you don't sew over your pins because that could potentially, I mean, I've seen them fly. And that's no bueno. All right. Boop, boop, boop. So now, when I fold that back, see, we got our little, our little lovely rickrack humps. I don't even know if you can see that. I will show you closer up, but I'm going to take you back over to the table. Please bear with while I screw you the right way. I feel like... Oh, there we go. And it doesn't help that both tables are a different thickness. There we go. <laughs> okay. Do you like how I said I wasn't going to go over two hours and it's hitting two hours now? But I feel like we need to at least, at least get through this, right? So you guys can see. All right. So there we go. We've stitched it up. Now when we fold that over, we have our little lovely rickrack detail. Um, so what I'm going to do now is... I am going to, um, because this isn't surge, if we left it like this, it would just continue to fray and fray and fray over time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pinking shears, and please don't laugh at them. They are horrible, and I need to get new ones, but they stick. They're just these little zigzag ones, and they will prevent your fabric from fraying over time. You see this in a lot of, like, if you're shopping for vintage, um, a lot of the homemade dresses, you'll see the pinking. And it's like, you know, even after all those years, the edges still look pretty darn good. All right. So since I'm back at the computer, if you have any questions, let me know. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, Silver Gypsy. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Because it can screw up the little, the, the mechanism in there. And there's a lack of space. Uh, Super COVID put everything on a halt. But hopefully things are starting to return a little bit more to normal for you. Came out so cute. Oh, thanks. I feel like we have to give JL the props for it being a cute skirt because she is the one that picked out the style and the fabric. Janome during the winter when we starting, dying is the style machine was exactly what I wanted. I think I missed it earlier. Are those fabrics just like a quilting cotton? You know what? I honestly, I don't know. Uh, JL bought the fabric. Um, it isn't. This is washed once. It's not super heavy. It is very soft. So I think that it probably is not quilting cotton. Um, or if it is, it's not. No, because the this fabric is really, really light. And it has a really good feel to it. So I don't think it's quilting cotton. Because quilting cotton, cotton tends to be a little bit thicker. My first uh, ever dress that I made... Okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to show this to you. I'll get as close as I can. The first ever dress that I made that actually was, uh, I did a YouTube video on it. Yeah, first of all, the first ever vintage dress I made. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to basically iron this in. And I want to, first, I'm going to iron it so that I want my Rick wrap to be nice and um, kind of pulled out 
So I'm going to take my time ironing this and make sure that it's how I like it. Let's uh, not to touch my pinky shears. All right. I don't know if my iron's hot enough. So I'm just kind of really making sure that everything is pulled out nicely. I want a nice, nice crisp. And then <clears throat> once this is done, because you'll notice that this uh, side of the facing is not finished and I did not pink it, it's because I'm going to serge that. So it'll have a nice finished edge when you are looking on the inside of the skirt. Humpy. Humpy, humpy. Yeah. <sighs> I'm like a part of me is like, oh, I feel like I've been doing all the talking. <laughs> Sometimes I wish it did allow me to hear you guys, though. You know? I wonder how we, you know, if there's a way to do that, you know, or <clears throat> like the things you say, like robot translating so I can hear you guys when I'm doing stuff. Uh, you know, the difference between a serger and a cross. I had asked earlier when you were sewing, what's the difference between a serger and a cross stitch? <gasps> Group Zoom call. That might. That's something to think about there. Um, I'm not. You know what? Let me. Oh, man. Some of my humps aren't as out as other humps. Let me set a cross stitch. Uh, I'm not sure. Because when I think cross stitch, I think cross stitch, you know. Um, yeah, when I think cross stitch, I think embroidery. So I'm not sure if that's what you mean. But um, Sir Germ is if you look at the inside of any like manufactured piece of clothing you're always going to see like the edge of the fabric or your seam um the edge of the fabric is encased in thread let me see if i have yeah here we go i always have a test piece uh for but uh this is a serger this is what the serger does. So um, you can accomplish something like this on a regular sewing machine, but it keeps your thread from unraveling. But I also like, um, this is called a safety stitch. So it not only encases the edges of the fabric to keep it from fraying, but it has like this double thread um, on the seam. So it makes it like really nice and sturdy so that, um, you know, you don't have to worry about your clothing your pieces coming about. Overstitch. Yes, that's it. Yes, yes, yes. Overstitch. Is that okay? So there we go. So we have that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Right? How cute does that look? So let's see. It is 10 o'clock now. How oh, I'm not familiar with that turn. Chain stitching. I think chain stitch. Yeah. Cross stitch. Yeah, completely different from a cross stitch. Group them. So cute. So, so cute. Okay. So I am trying to think. It's 10 o'clock now. Um, let's. Let's try I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Because here's the thing. 
kind of want to show you putting on the waistband. I kind of want to show you all of it, but um, like I said, I need to get this done by tomorrow. Um, so I can't live stream all night. <laughs> or could I? It's Twitch, but um, dee -dee 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 -dee. um let's see. What would you guys want to see? If I do one more thing on here, what would you want it to be? Would you want it to be um, the pocket or attaching the waistband? Those are the two things I think we would have time to do. So let me know. Uh, let me see those humps. Woohoo! Lovely lady humps. So cute. It's And it's such a simple detail, but it really just gives a lot of, like, cuteness to, you know. And then we're going to have the little pocket on there. I mean, how cute is that going to look? Ah! Waistband, 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 waistband. Okay. For us to do the waistband, that is going to require that I run to the serger, which is right next to the other machine. But here's the thing is I... Um, I'm not going to switch the camera over there just to run a straight surge. So um, let's do, do you guys mind talking amongst yourselves for maybe just like five minutes? Less than that? I mean, I could talk from here, but I won't know what you guys are talking about. All right. I'm just moving my. Now I feel like I'm just going to like narrate everything I'm doing right now. Um, I don't know. Would you guys, well, I don't know. Would you want to see the search? I don't know. Because then I feel like, you know, it'll take me a year to move you over here. But I am going to have to move you over here eventually to show you or am I? I don't know. I don't know. So for a, um, I wonder if I can at least turn you around a little bit. Can I? Can I? Boop. There you go. You can at least see the back of my head, right? For sergers, you need uh, four spools of thread. And I do multicolors. Um, I've got a bunch of yellow, so I'm going to use that. And then I've got two whites. So um, I think the most intimidating thing, I'm just assuming what you guys might potentially be interested in hearing. Um, a lot of people are intimidated with the um, threading of a serger. And I would say if you are going to invest in a serger, it that really is probably the main thing. I don't think you need to spend thousands of dollars on one that will like completely thread by itself. Um, Cause there are some that do that, but definitely you're going to want one that's not the cheapest so that um, cause the really cheap ones, you, you will take three hours just to change the thread out and you will never want to change your thread. Um, where are my video? So, something to think about when it comes to sergers. But there are some where, like, it requires pliers, not just on this side, but also, or tweezers, I shouldn't say pliers, but also on the other side to actually, and that's, whew, that's a lot to deal with. And they say like, oh, you could just like chain stitch, you know, change your thread by attaching one thread to the other. And I've tried to do that when I had like the really cheap one. Never worked. It always snapped. Um, this is not hard because it's hard. It's just I'm having a hard time threading. Because I've never threaded when people were watching before. And with sergers, I do find that it's really important that you make sure it goes in properly. Because, um, like, if the thread gets tucked behind something that it shouldn't, it can be a little 
which make it a little difficult. Okay. Um, and it may seem like um, a lot is left to be done. But honestly, I find that the longest portion of sewing, especially if you're drafting, is not only drafting the pattern, but it's cutting out all the pieces, you know, and like um, cutting out the interfacing and all the little bits and bobbles that go along with it. But I feel like once you have all that done, the process can go pretty quick. So even though, you know, I'm like, yeah, it is 10 o'clock at night and I'm mailing this tomorrow, but it's okay. It's okay. Because I don't have too much more to sew, really. I always feel like now I'm like a part of me is like, I kind of want a skirt like this now. I might have to make one for myself. <laughs> All right, so the two, those were the two hardest stitches to do are the ones that kind of weave through everything. But once that's done, it's basically kind of like threading a regular sewing machine. So not bad at all. And my lights, my lighting in here is not the best either over by the machines. I realize now as well that you guys can probably see like the back of my uh, fake hair piece. <laughs> okay, one more to go. Well, not too terrible, right? I don't know. I feel like you guys are behind me being like, oh, my God, that's. <laughs> and then the this is the best, the best, the best tip I ever got with a serger after you finish threading it is that you hold your threads and then you move your, the wheel of your needles like four or five, six times because um, you can kind of see the need, the threads starting to chain and you'll know right away if something's really wrong with what you did. And then I always take a little scrap fabric because I find like the first time it goes through, it doesn't always catch right. And I just want that through. Yeah, like it's catching a little thread, which I don't know why. So then I just get them to cut. And then now that one was a little weird, so I'm just going to run this piece through one more time, and it should be... Good to go. Perfect. So now, uh, oh, Tonga room, literally talking behind your back, Jen. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. Are we talking about, what are we talking about? We're talking about California or Australia. Okay. So now I'm literally just going to run this edge through. The nice thing about a serger too is it uh, trims as it cuts as well. It cuts as it stitches. Trimming and cutting is the same thing. Pink. 
And then see how nice that looks? Nice and finished on the inside. Let's swing around. Okie dokie. Okie dokie pokey. Skokie pokey. Where's my waistband? Um, all right. That's the, that one's easy. That's the back. The Just figuring out what side is which now. <laughs> um, I just don't, I'm not trusting my pattern, my brain now. It's like two inches for a button. Okay, I'm trusting the process of the fact that this says buttonhole side. So the buttonhole side one slightly larger than the button one, which is what it's supposed to be. Okay. Now I need to find the things that disappear. Okay. So this is the larger of the two. So that one goes with this one. So I have my waistband. I have my interfacing. I'm going to smack those two together. Thank you guys are talking about California. I was saying I live near the Tonga room when you come out. Oh, we definitely have. I don't know. You guys probably already talked about this, but we. I know we have tiki bars on our list of things that we want to do. I'm on the one. Every one just waves at me as they go down the 101. Me oh, California meet and greet. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah, we are going to have a Santa Cruz day, though, because I need to have my Lost Boys moment. Okay, I have a really, I don't know if this is a weird way to do, um, <laughs> to do waistbands, but what I do is iron it out. I take my interfacing rough side down and then, but this is not the weird part, just so you know. I have not watched. Can we get Eurovision here? I kind of would love to watch it, but I don't know how. Okay. So interfacing is on. So what I do is I take a different type of marker. This is more like a crayon, but a wax marker, right? Because the part that attaches right away to the skirt is, I'm already going to have a 5 8 seam allowance. But what I do is I actually take and mark my 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. On the inside. 
basically, I don't necessarily, you know, it's one of those things that on circle skirts, it's not as big of a deal. Um, but I use that as my guide for where to stitch my waistband just so it stays nice and flat. And then on the other side, I actually mark half an inch on the uh, right side of the fabric. Because then what I do, and the reason why I do half an inch is because I turn it over and, well, first fold it in half. and iron and then I flip it over so that I see the mark on the outside and then I fold that edge in and then the reason why I do half an inch is because I want the mark to be inside the seam allowance so I'm going to fold it just a little past that mark so that way it makes sure it's at five eighths of an inch and not half an inch. And then, so basically, my waistband looks like this. So this is already, um, the seam allowance is stitched in. So this is the edge that's going, this is the edge that's going to attach to the skirt. Now, oh, I need my pants. And need scissors. I really need to put scissors in every machine so that, like, they're just always there. Same with pins. Uh, when you're... Oh, okay. So this is the easiest way to make sure that everything is nice and centered because here's the thing is you don't want to pin down or even stitch something like a waistband only to get to the end and find out it's not even. So we want to make sure that this is even across the waist, especially since we're attaching it to a curve. So you're going to need to kind of like straighten that curve out. You're probably even going to need to stretch it a little bit. So we need to make sure that center is center. So all you're going to do is take the waistband, fold it in half, hold it and just little clip. Well, make sure you don't clip all the way through your seam allowance. Then on your skirt, you're going to do the same thing. And we're going to keep that facing on the inside here. Go to the opposite end. And you're going to clip. So now we can match our centers. And you're going to put right side to right side. Ah, uh, that would be, we will someday. We have, we have Disney World on our, girl trip schedule well jail's going without us but for this trip i'm excited though it's our first time to disney world like i never went to disneyland but so when she, we went there it was like her introducing me to her disney and now she's going to meet my disney all right so those little snips that we made we're just going to match them up so now we know both are center then i go to the opposite end and I match up the sides. And then I go to the opposite side and I match up the side. And that facing is gonna get caught up in that fabric. So now you'll notice that it's slightly puckery there and that is gonna happen because it's on the curve. So I just kind of um, hold it taunt and go right between the two pins. And again, hold it a little taunt go right between the two pins. Now, the thing that I haven't thought about is the fact that, <clears throat> Okay, taking all these pins out. Pins out. This is what I forgot. This is why sewing at 10.30, 10.30 is sometimes a little risque. This is also why I always say, pause right before you do anything. Oh, I'm so good, button. 
Um, so uh, we are, because we're finishing off this waistband, this is going to be a closed waistband, there's a five-eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I'm um, just going to measure that. So this section, stop right there, because that is going to be, that's going to be stitched like this. So when we find center, we're going to change our center. We're going to match up the line with the edge of the fabric on the other side. So see how that changes our center just slightly. So I am going to snip that. You might be saying, but how Jen will I remember which is which? Because you're going to immediately take your marker and you're going to go like that. So you know that that's the center you should use. So now, you take that. We're going to match that center to center. Then when we come over here, we want to make sure, because... <clears throat> We want to make sure that when we're sewing this, that we are not capturing. Um, we want to make sure that we're not capturing that in. Does it matter at that point? I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Does it? No. So I'm just going to match up the edge of the fabric. And then, and see how it's not as gappy? That's why, because we were putting too much fabric in there. And that's why, um, when you think about it, the top of a circle skirt, because it's um, cut on a curve, it behaves a lot like a bias, where it's going to have a lot more stretch to it than if you had cut straight across the fibers. Oh, what's happening? Yes, I was in slow Well, I think it was when people didn't machines to make sewing. No one just still calling. Oh, dead bodies! What? I'm missing all the good stuff. It would be a waste of good clothes to ride. Well, wow. See, this is how I know we're right for each other. Okay, so now. We're going to sew that together because then what we are going to do is um, once that's sewed together, we're going to fold this down and sew this together. So I'm actually going to stop just shy of this. So I'm probably here. Let me move the pin. I'm probably only going to stitch to about there because um that's going to get attached anyway, but it allows me to move this out of the way when I stitch that, but you'll see that in a little bit. So I'm going to quick leave you guys while I take it over to the regular sewing machine. And the reason why I'm doing it on the regular sewing machine is, uh, is there a reason why I'm doing it on the regular? Do I need to do it? Can't I do it on the, no, I could do it on the serger because I don't need this bit. I just surge right off of that. So it's surge, surge, surge. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I would have to surge all the way down. So <laughs> here comes the thinking process. So that's gonna be attached like that. And then when I attach that to that, it's just moving that out of the way. I always pick it if I didn't. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, I'm going to take it in the serger and run it across. Follow Deathlings. Is that a YouTube channel? Caitlin Doherty. Or is that a podcast? You can take, yeah, but I want to trim off this excess. I don't want all this excess. Um, in the seam allowance. Okay, I'll be right back.
Okay, there we go. It's all nice. I'm actually going to take this. I find this, it's not a completely necessary step. I just find it a little bit easier, but I iron this up so that it's not flapping around like that. And it's a little bit easier because we're gonna lay this over it and it just makes it go through the machine a little bit nicer in my humble, so. So did, uh, was that a podcast or was that a YouTube channel? Yep, YouTuber. She is fun and has a retro vibe. We need you. My God. I cannot wait to catch up on the conversation that is going on right now, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Once we uh, finish stitching the other side, this um, that will be the uh, end of the live stream tonight. Just because otherwise I will be live streaming for hours. <laughs> Which, is that a bad thing? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm enjoying hanging out with you guys. This is fun. I feel like if it was Twitch, probably would just continue to live stream. <laughs> All right. So, mm -hmm. this is what we have right now. So you can see this is hanging over, right? So we're going to finish that off. And we have the other end here. And then you can see the facing inside. That's going to lay nice because once that's stitched down, it's going to look like this. Not going to look nice. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Tells us to talk among ourselves. No. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to um, send, you, send you guys to the table. So basically now we want to kind of <clears throat> push this out and we are going to stitch the edge down. And if anybody knows an easier way to do this, I always find this to be like super annoying and it just always feels so cumbersome, cumbersome, cumbersome. Like I see some people like when they, you know, like when you're watching somebody do a sewing thing and it's like, oh, and they just put it through the machine. And then when you try doing it, it's like, you know, trying to do it in a tiny corner or something and it's just awkward and it feels wrong and then you start getting all sweaty and then like, is your stitch going to go right? Blah, blah, blah. And you will notice on this side, um, the fabric is a little bit longer and that is because we trimmed off on the serger, it trimmed off some of our seam allowance. This I'm going to do through the regular machine because... Um, while I could do it through the serger, I would run the risk of actually hitting this by accident. So if I hit it by accident on my regular machine, it won't be as big of a deal. Tennis or whatever. Oh, thanks, Jay Smith. Oh, I like it. Plans are being made. Plans are being made. All right, I'll be right back. You guys have all the good gruesome conversations without me. Because <laughs> it takes like 24 hours for the chat to show up when I when it posts on YouTube. So it's like I'm just left wondering. Okay. 
Okay, so it is sewn across and we're just gonna basically flip it the other way. So I'm going to trim off the excess. The pinking shears. And then we are going to turn it around. And it did catch a little bit right there, which is fine because I'm going to grab my little And then we want to make sure that that is that that seam. Oh, can't even see that. Whoops. Uh, basically, it caught right here on my lovely rickrack humps. So I'm just loosening those up a little bit. And you can see that seam allowance is poking down. So we want that to be up. And then this part, we're just going to tuck inside. So now, because one of the reasons... And, Okay, I'm just going to lay this down so you guys can take a look at it. And see how nice and finished that is? How gorgeous is that? Gorgeous, right? Um, I would recommend, because this is not fully oot in a boot, I'm going to just stick a, uh, you can use chopsticks for this. So I'm just going to pull on that so it is nice and crisp on the edge there. But um. I'm not worried about having to pull a couple seams because to finish off this waistband, once I attach everything, I don't finish everything, like close this part until everything is attached, is I, you can stitch in the ditch right here. I usually stitch just a little bit on the other side because I find like stitching in the ditch doesn't always hit the fabric on the other side. So it also kind of, to me, finishes off finishes it off just a little bit more nicely. So I'm going to take it to the machine and also kind of uh, iron that out so it lays super nice and flat. That's the best thing you can do for your waistbands is iron, iron, iron. So that is, yeah, there you go. How cute is that, right? She looking so cute. It is the epitome of spring. I like that. Okay. So before I go, so basically, um, on the, I'm going to basically do it, do the same thing on the other side. Um, but of course I don't have to do the rickrack and I don't have to sew the flap on. I just fold the flap over. Um, so yeah, so we're just going to continue on with the list. I wish, I wish I had a little more time to do that, but, um, I'm really, I, I'm really having a good time with these live streams. I, I think you guys are too. Um, so it will, from this point on, it will be every other week and it will probably be either a Wednesday or Thursday. And next time I'm going to be sewing, I'm going to do another skirt. I think they're just easier and we will be drafting it up again. Um, let me know in the comments or message me if you see any like pictures of a skirt that you want, want to see me recreate. If you want to see me go through the entire thing of a button down, we can definitely do that again. I probably wouldn't, if it's the same type of skirt, I wouldn't draft the pattern again because we've already done that. But yeah, let me know what you would uh, like to see me sew next and I will take you through the whole process. I mean, if you guys like this, I, I love it. It makes having, makes sewing um, a lot more fun. It feels like, cause I always love when I can get together, um, with friends and just kind of sit in the same room and craft. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we can do it as a, uh, zoom. I'll look into that in the next two weeks. Um, sorry, I'm going to leave cameras like right there. Um, maybe it's a whole five synergy. Oh my God. That's going to be Oh, Sunray, thank you so much for coming out. Have a blast in NOLA. Eat all the food for me. Go to Dat Dog if you haven't already. Um, it's a hot dog place, but they have 
Well, they have vegetarian hot dogs that you can get like all the toppings on that I absolutely love. Oh. Um, JL will fill me in. I think there was some talk about a meetup in San Francisco and I'm sure JL will fill me in on everything. Um, but I love the idea. If that's what everybody was talking about. Um, Thursday would be great. So you don't get in trouble at work. Okay. Thursday it is because Friday catch up is one of my admins as well. So it's always nice to have uh, you in jail around. Yay. 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 I love this. A paneled skirt. <gasps> Tiffany. Okay. Let's look into a panel skirt. And I've always wanted to do. Hmm. Let me think about that. Let me think about that. I like the idea. I think it's a great idea. A skirt made that really wide box plates. Yes. Um, I've always wanted to do something with gores. So do it in like a pattern versus um, <clears throat> a solid. So. Let's see. Stupid junk. How do you kind you can either <clears throat> you can DM, DMing me on Instagram is the easiest way. Um, I do read my comments on the videos. So once the video, uh, once this live stream goes live, you can also um, send ideas through the comment section. Um, <clears throat> you, I have a Facebook page. You can always uh, message me there. Although Facebook messages, I don't get as easily. I have a hard time, really hard time checking Facebook. I do. I still do Facebook just because I know some of you guys don't have Instagram and I wouldn't want to lose that connection with you guys there. Um, you have enough in your stash. Well, I will say, like for the most part, this stuff down here is all like a lot of this is scraps from projects, but I don't want to get rid of it because, you know, you never know when you can use it. Ask a mortician. Done, Tiffany. Done. All right, guys. Um, Thank you guys so, so much for coming out and <laughs> literally hanging out with me for three minutes almost. Oh, my God, you guys. We're like those people that get on the phone and can't get off. JL knows what I'm talking about. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful night. Um, oh, by the way, if you guys haven't watched my brooch video, please, please go watch it. It's a great video. And I had to record it three times and it felt really, really cursed. But I love how it turned out. But nobody's watching it. So I don't know what's going on. So if you haven't seen that, please go check it out. Um, but good night. And uh, we will live stream again in two weeks. And I will tell you all about my trip to Boston, which is actually just going to be a trip to go hang out with my friends at their house. We're not really doing anything, but it's a whole different state. So, all right, guys, love your faces. See you soon. And I will see you on the interwebs.